I'm Megan. And I'm Neil. We've packed up our home in Glasgow and moved into our cute retro camper van Harmony to travel all over Scotland exploring the best places to stand up paddle along the way. So come join our adventure as we visit the highlands, islands and everywhere in between on our Sup Safari Scotland! Arriving on the Isle of Harris, we immediately climb up into the hills and travel south in search of the legendary sandy beaches. find a great spot to park by the Sound of Terence, which is right near Luskintyre Beach. Beautiful Harris sunny day, out of breath, <laughs> dragging myself over very shallow water to get to somewhere deep enough for the fins to actually be able to go into the water. We can do some paddling, so sen sensational sunny day, that's just beautiful. As luck would have it, it was a lovely sunny day, which always brings out the deep rich turquoise of the water that Harris is famous for. Most people when visiting Harris head straight for Luskintyre which is a beautiful beach but I love the way the water and white sand swirl together in the upper reaches of the sound. The landscape here is immense. That's me on my sup in the lower left hand corner. Pretty epic huh? Here the water is mostly less than 30 centimeters deep so if you fall off you can easily stand up. And there's that crystal clear water again. So the water is actually quite shallow this far up into the inlet. There is a little sort of a narrow channel that has a bit deeper water. So I've been following that. 
as you get out that way there will probably be a lot more opportunity for paddling waves and things like that but this is really cool because we've sort of got it all to ourselves so beautiful it's just stunning looking forward to seeing what the drone shots look like get a real idea of all the colors of the water and uh, actually paddling up against the wind out towards the the open water so it's really good to have a, a breeze that's going to push us back to where we just came from After our paddle we went to check out the famous Luskantire beach and even managed to spot another paddle border. You can see why artists get captivated by this scenery, the dramatic skies only add to the ambience. We climbed to the top of the sand dunes where we could get a better view of the entire sound and all three beaches, Luskantire, Hogabost and Stelabost. One of the things I love about Harmony is her flat dash there. Look at that. The only thing we had booked for an entire four month trip was a visit to the St Kilda Islands off the coast of Harris and Lewis. They are rather enigmatic group of islands, historically seen as being at the edge of the world. And it felt like it. How are you feeling, Neely? At the moment, good. I think we should check in in a couple of hours and it might be a different story. Hopefully not. Yeah. but even I was a little trepidatious about heading off into the northern Atlantic in such a small boat, especially when we started jumping four meter waves like Evil Knievel on show day. And it all went south after that for the next couple of hours. We finally made it to the bay of the largest island of Kota. It looks pretty calm on film, but as you watch the tender frame against the backdrop, you can see that even the bay was pretty choppy. Having made it to solid ground, we get a quick run through from the ranger of the island and are free to explore. We've not long arrived on the islands of St Kilda, we're on the main one, Herto. So over behind me is the bay of the, the main island where all the houses were sort of nestled around this bay. There was a real atmosphere as the low-lying cloud clung to the hilltops. It gave us a sense of just how dramatic the climate changes must be out here. The gun and ammunition building were constructed after a German U-boat shelled the naval signal station in World War I. We meet some soy sheep, which are the closest genetic examples of Bronze Age sheep in the world. They've been separated from other sheep for thousands of years and are the subject of much research. 
The main row of houses were originally black houses, with thatch roofs placed end on to the street. In the 1800s, the more modern buildings with windows were built. One of these is a museum displaying items from life on the island and an account of what it was like to live on St Kilda before the evacuation in the 1930s. One of the black houses without its roof. They were used as storage when the new homes were built. We take a walk around the bay to check out the view. Up on the mountains around the village were loads of little cleats or storage buildings for food. Before long it was time to leave the island and take a boat ride amongst the sea stack.
As we watched St Kilda disappear over the horizon, it made us think of the islanders as they left Herta for the final time. An excerpt from a book written in 1977 has this to say about the event. The morning of the evacuation promised a perfect day. The sun rose out of a calm and sparkling sea and warmed the impassive cliffs of Oisvel. The sky was hopelessly blue and the sight of Herta, green and pleasant as the island of so many careless dreams made parting all the more difficult. Observing tradition, the islanders left an open Bible and a small pile of oats in each house, locked all the doors and at 7am boarded the Harbell. Although exhausted by the strain and hard work of the last few days, they were reported to have stayed cheerful throughout the operation. But as the long antler of Dunn fell back onto the horizon and the familiar outline of the island grew faint, the severing of an ancient tie became a reality and the St Kildans gave way to tears. The sun pops out again just in time for a stunning panorama over the Sound of Tarrance. We take the drive around Harris's Golden Road. Thanks for watching. If you'd love to keep the videos coming, you can support us by liking, subscribing, clicking notifications, and sharing with your paddleboarding mates. See you next week.